Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to continue our study on Judges chapter 15. But before we begin, we have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time that we have again this morning and for all the blessings of this past week of study. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that as we um, attempt to close up Judges 15, and move on to Judges 16, that you can give us uh, more insight, correct us, and help us to understand the significance of what it is we're finding in your word, and that we can apply these things to our lives, that we can have a conviction and a power, um, that we can trust in you and do the work that you put before us each day. We pray that you can bless each one searching these things, that you can help us with our all of our needs that burden us, whether it's health or financial or relationships, we just ask, Lord, that you can give us wisdom on how to proceed. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we had a few things that we still needed to address from Judges 15. And so we had, we'd gone through the symbols and there's probably some symbols we could still look at. Um, but we were, we're finishing off with this story of Samson using this jawbone of an ass to kill a thousand Philistines. And then he's going to be thirsty and when he's thirsty, he's going to, God is going to cleave this jawbone of an ass. Um, and there's going to be water that comes up. So when he had drunk, his spirit came again and he revived. So we have symbols here that relate to 9-11. Also relating to a chiasm. The idea that something's cleaved uh, usually indicates a chiasm. And then, of course, he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. So um, we've looked at that before. Now, um, so in taking this, uh, in taking these, these symbols now and trying to put them on a line, uh, I guess what we, we have to do is do that. And stop it. Okay, the cat's making noise. So, and, and one of the things we addressed, of course, was this April 5th, 2030, and how we relate this. Now, the idea is that the first day of the first month is 9-11. And we, we know about this idea of self-same day, this anniversary date. It doesn't mean it's one year. It can be any sort of anniversary. And from Ezra 7 to 10, we have that first day of the first month to the first day of the first month with all those other dates in between and that final period of the divorcement, which would be uh, the end of yesterday and the beginning of this day, marking that point. Uh, the end of January 11th, beginning of January 12th, is 2,640 days. And we know yesterday's study was number 264. And um, Ren had noted that this is the first day of the 10th month, which could be uh, the 10th month first day. So it can be 101. If you add 101 to 264, you get 365. So 264... The complement to the 365 is 101. So, so that's just uh, an observation there. So my point, though, really goes to this whole idea of a year. So in the story of Ezra, we have from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, 354 days. And we could see that we could apply that to 354 months. And we could do it 
different ways dealing with prophetic months or actual lunar months. Um, so if we went from, uh, if I can remember how it worked, it's a little more complicated. Um, if we, we could go from the month that was September 11th, so that month, and we're going to take the actual lunar months. And if we counted those, um, 354 months would end. So the 354 days of that year ends on um, April 5th, 2030. So this is one of the ones that I've, I've shown the least in establishing April 5th, 2030. And if I went uh, prophetic months, that is if I, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this out here. Uh, just need to get my, uh, my chart here. Um, Just for fun. So we got a new whiteboard here. It's gonna have some light reflecting off it unless I turn those lights off. And Okay. And let's see what happens here. Let's see the camera there, but. I just wanted to trap this new whiteboard, which I got from Bible studies. That's not too bad. Okay, so if we have September 11th, 2001, does anybody know what day of the biblical month that is? You got a biblical month that's going to go from uh, this month here. I don't remember what it was. Sixty-one. Okay, so it's going to be uh, the sixth month. So the first day of the sixth month is here, and this would be the first day of the seventh month. And so this is going to be uh, the sixth month, the eleventh day. That's what we have. For, uh, 621. Oh, 21. Okay. So, so the 21st day, I'll do it this way, of the sixth month. That's going to be September 11th. So September 11th happens in this month. Now, this month is a lunar month, right? This is, um, that is, it's going to be either 29 or 30 days, these months, right? They're not going to have a month that's 29.530587 days because months start of course on a day basically at sunset uh, they can be slightly different lengths um, in in time uh, based on our standardized time but in the jewish reckoning uh, they always started they, they always had the same number of units so um so you got the chart there ram uh, which chart? The uh, the one from four fifty seven BC. The the chart that we had done with all the dates of four fifty seven BC and lining up. So this date here is going to be August twenty second, right? So that's a port important date. 
uh, because that's going to be the date in 1844 that Samuel Snow is going to publish uh, The True Midnight Cry. And then this other date here, when the first day of the seventh month begins, is September. Lord rattles. I don't like that. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get rid of that rattling part. September uh, 20th, if I remember correctly. Right. So that means this month is going to have uh, 29 days. Okay. So this is going to be the start of this. So this is month number one. And then you're going to get to the end of this. So you're going to have this final month, the 354th month is going to begin on uh, March 6th, 2030. And and that's going to end, I mean, technically on the, uh, at sunset on the fourth day of the fourth month, April 4th, 2030. So you're going to have this month over here. That's going to be the end of this. And this is the 354th month, 354. And this is going to go from uh, March 6th. To, uh, and then the first day of the first month is going to be April 5th, 2030. So this to me is an extremely important part of understanding April 5th, 2030, because it ties us to September 11th. And, and this is the first day of the first month in the, in the literal sense in 2030. But this also is symbolized by the first day of the first month. Now, if we take this as the first day of the first month, and we use um, so the calculation there, just don't remember the numbers. But if I take 30 times 354, I get 10,620 days. And so if I go from September 11th, 2001, I go 10,620 days. And I do it as an inclusive count so that I'm just counting the first day. Then what's going to happen is I'm going to have um, this extend 186 days. So the 187th day is going to be October 8th, 2030. And that's going to be the 10th day of the seventh month. So this period of time is 354 times 30, which is 30. okay. So why are we looking at this? I mean, we know that we've we've already established this period of time to April 5th. And that's going to be this period of time from basically counting today. If you count um, from today, it will bring you to April 5th, 2030 by 2,640 days, right? So if you count it from today, um, which is, of course, the first day of the 10th month. So we have that first day of the 10th month. So we'll put that in here. Right, so that's... Um, January 11th to 12th, uh, 2023. And this period of time here, 
is 2,640 days. And that's, that's the divorce. But remember, we got this date by starting on the first day of the first month in 1844, and we counted 2,300 months. Now, I did look at trying to divide that period of time into 354 uh, units. That is, if I took uh, the number that I get, which is uh, 67,920, and I divided it by 354, so I divided it into a day, each one of those days is 191 days, for each one of those months, I guess, is 191 days and a decimal. And that decimal is 191 days, 20 hours, and uh, 44 minutes. So, um, and about uh, 45 seconds, it's 44 seconds and something. So whatever that means, I mean, it's just 191 days. Now, the thing we can take about 191 days is what? So if I say that, you know, so if I broke that period of time going all the way back here to you know, the first day of the first month in 1844, and I counted this period of time, which is uh, 67,920 days, and I divided it by 354, I would get 191 days. And the number was... Uh, 20 hours, 44 minutes, and 44 seconds. Okay. Roughly. Now, it probably could be a bit more depending on how, if I take the decimal that's left over, actually. So it's actually 67,920, and there is a decimal. Um, but, but 191. Do we have 9-11 and 11-9 in there? Can we see yes. this? Yeah, so, so we can have 11-9 or 9-11. It could re represent either one of those. Um, so all it does is it ties us to this symbol that the first day, uh, and this one would not go there. This one would go up to here, so I put this over on spot. This, this one goes here. This one goes here, okay. And um, so we have the symbol of 191 days and we have um, all of these things that showing us that 9-11 is connected to that first day of the first month. So if we think about Millerite history, they have 186 days from the first day of the first month, the cardinal count, so that the 10th day of the seventh month is the 187th day of the year. But we could also come to the first day of the first month from the story of Ezra, uh, just following it along. So mostly in Millerite history, they would have recognized uh, and they did recognize that Ezra left Babylon on the first day of the first month and arrived on the first day of the fifth month. They don't really look at the divorce proceedings at, at, all, at all that I know of and try to address the times of that or even uh, anything beyond the fact that there is this day of atonement, but they don't even try to place the first day of the fifth month in their history. Uh, they just mark the first day of the first month and the 10th day of the seventh month. They do mark the first day of the seventh month. That is, they're going to recognize in, in their calculation that that's October 13th, right? So if you have the 13th is the first day of the seventh month, then the 10th day of the, let me see here. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 
Yeah. So the 22, October 22 becomes the 10th day of the seventh month. So they do know that date, but they don't think about, well, when is the Passover? When is Pentecost? Um, those types of things. But we know that we can go from the first day of the first month, and instead of counting 186 days, we can count 186 years. And 186 years will bring us to April 5th, 2030, using the biblical year. So if we're going to go from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030, it's going to be exactly 186 uh, years, right? And that's so instead of counting those days, we're going to count years and we get April 5th, 2030. So we've got it from the week of Christ. We got it from the 2300 days itself. We got it from um, uh, the years themselves. Uh, we looked at prophetic years and prophetic months. We get 187 years and 20 months. Um, we have this use of uh, the year in the story of Ezra, the 354 days becoming 354 years, right? And so when you get to the end of the 354th day, you're gonna have uh, the beginning, right, of the year. So that's gonna be the first day of the first month, April 5th, 2030. So there's just these, to me, impossible kind of coincidences. We have all these things pointing to April 5th, 2030. And we have this in the story of Samson. So the story of Samson is going to give us um, these, uh, the confirmation of these, plus other places in the book of Judges as well. So here we have a book of the Bible that we can take as representing the history all the way up to yesterday and today, because that's going to be um, the 2023 marking. It's going to be marking this history, this date. But we don't really project anything beyond that other than the April 5th, 2030 day. And again, we have it there as a symbol, um, whether what it means as far as a date in, in history, whether it actually comes or whether whatever happens there is significant, those things we don't know. And we would, we would argue that we shouldn't be able to uh, predict events because we haven't been able to and God has shown us that we we can't and and so we're not looking for any events but we still need to know what it what it means symbolically now one of the things we see here too another symbol is that this 354th month starts on March 6th so I didn't write March there very well so I just up March 6th and March 6th is the sixth day of the third month. So that's a symbol of Pentecost. So that's one of the symbols that has been showing up in our lines. Um, and Pentecost, of course, is connected to the upper room. And we see this definitely in the chapter 15 of, of, uh, of Judges, where Samson is going to, on the day of Pentecost, come with that Pentecost offering to see his wife. He's been given to someone else, and now we're going to have this situation where he uh, uh, does revenge. They challenge him on that. He's then going to kill a whole bunch of people, which is a great slaughter, which is, again, a symbol of 9-11. And then we're going to have uh, Judah come in, and Judah is going to be 3,000 men of Judah who come and bind him and deliver him to the Philistines. And of course, he's going to take this jawbone of an ass, uh, kill 3,000 of, or 1,000 of them, pardon me. And then, uh, and then he's going to be thirsty and he's going, the, the jawbone is going to be cleaved. It's going to cleave, God's going to cleave the jawbone and water is going to come out of that jawbone to quench Samson's thirst. And so how do we address all of these symbols? that we have, especially in the context of these lines. So you guys have thought about it for a while. Thoughts, I need your input here.
can we establish this April 5th, 2030 date beyond a shadow of a doubt? I think we're beginning to. Okay. I think people are, are, are seeing it. Um, you know, we have all of these connections. Um, we have these echoes, these anniversaries, these self-same days showing up all of these different symbols but now we're looking at this story of samson we see it, it's addressing this this uh, light that we have regarding april 5th 2030 and but it's bringing us back to these symbols of 9 11 and yet we know that it's talking about our history presently and, and the way that I, the way that I understand it, the way that I addressed it, is that um, nine eleven can show up in different ways because it's it's the Sunday law, and we're moving towards the Sunday law. And since every way mark can just uh, typify every other way mark. We can see that this, these lines here, the history we're going through, is typifying the Sunday law. And, and you know, of course, we've gone through the pandemic, which was a type of the Sunday law, but now we're we're moving towards this, this sort of I, I don't know what to call it. As far as these lines are concerned, I don't see anything beyond today except April 5th, 2030. That is, I don't think that we're given a bunch of dates in the future. We're not given much information at this point of what, what this means. We're going into um, a period of time that, to, to me, it, it's, uh, I, I don't know what, what to do. As far as measuring the time now, I mean, some people have suggested some dates in the future but I don't see anything structurally that, that would suggest that other than April 5th, 2030. And, and, and I shouldn't really say that because we do have the, the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030 as well. And also the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029. So I do have some dates around that April 5th, 2030 date uh, that are significant as far as the structure. But what we have is, Basically, the next three, next seven years are going to be are going to be different than this last seven years has been. You know, if we if we go back to uh, 2016 and we look at what happened there when Stephen and I were at the School of the Prophets which really I think is when a lot of this started to come together. We didn't, we weren't setting dates in the future, but we really brought this chronology together. And so in the last seven years, a lot has happened and we can mark all of these dates. Um, I sort of have a feeling that we're not going to be marking as many dates in the future, at least ahead of time. We might notice dates as they pass. But to me, Colin's date is the last date until we get to that, um, the civil year uh, starting on the 10th day of the seventh month. So we're going to call that a jubilee. Um, and then we're going to have the first day of the first month in that year. And then it's going to end on the 10th day of the seventh month. And that's, that's, so I've spent a lot of time looking at all these spans of times and dates and everything. And that's as far as I can go. So any thoughts on this? Are we starting to see a picture? Do people start to see this picture? Is it a picture or a structure? Well, it's a structure. 
to me, a structure is, I mean, it's a picture of a structure because the structure is the actual time that we're going to be passing through and that we have passed through. Um, I think we're getting a detail of uh, a small picture inside that big picture, that big puzzle that we're putting together. I th I'm pretty sure we're seeing some real good detail. Uh, we've got a, we're getting a highlighted uh, picture inside that puzzle. Now we just need to move it around a little bit to go in with the other stuff that we're so rapidly acquiring. Well, well, I mean, we, I, I could keep adding to this because we know it's all part of this, this structure, but this structure goes all the way back to, you know, at least the first day of the first month in 1844. Right. So, so we can take the story of, of Ezra and we can put that from September 11th, 2001. So our repeat of history of Millerite history, but we can go back and see that this is the second angel's message in Millerite history, right? Where the first day of the first month, April 19th. So April 19th, that connects 1844 and September 11th together by using this April 5th, 2030 date. And, and that to me is, is pretty profound um, because one of the things that when I dealt with um, the structure of prophetic chronology and I started looking at, at these different dates and how they fit in, the September 11th date doesn't have the direct connection to the past that some other dates did, you know, especially once we started getting July 18th and so forth. And that, that always bothered me a little bit. I thought there should be, you know, from October 22nd, 1844, or from August 11th, uh, 1840, or from even April 19th, 1844, that I should just have the number of days or the number of months or the number of weeks to September 11th, 2001 as being significant. And the one thing that I didn't have, which I now have, is it's the story of Ezra from 457 BC that marks the end of the 2300 days that now is going to connect 9-11 to 1844, but is going to use it through uh, this April 5th, 2030 date, which we first get from the week of Christ. So, so now we have, and, and I'm not saying we didn't have symbols of that, right? We had the symbols of, you know, if you took 1840 and 2001, and you did some mathematical things, you get 391.5 and, and so forth. So, so there were things that marked September 11th symbolically, but just as a span of time as part of the structure, I couldn't really connect it. I couldn't take any of those dates in Millerite history. I couldn't take any of the dates from 1798 to 1844 and connect those to se September 11th in just a direct way. But now we can connect it with this April 5th, 2030 day. Now, if you think about it as a Seventh-day Adventist, so, so think about this. So if somebody from Millerite history, um, maybe Samuel Snow, could have looked into the future and saw uh, this structure that, you know, we have these 2,300 months from the first day of the first month and this 186 years. And, and you believe in a day for a year, well, you know, wouldn't we put the end of the Day of Atonement into this history 2030? I mean, obviously they're gonna be looking at it happening in their time and they wouldn't have imagined it. But if, if you took them from that time, let's say you took Samuel Snow and you could sit him down today in front of this whiteboard and you could um, show him all the things that have happened, um, I would think that he would have to be pretty convinced from his perspective, well, that's really where the end of the Day of Atonement is. October 22nd, 1844 marks the beginning. And he would have to say, well, this would be showing the end of the Day of Atonement. Now, I'm not saying it is, right? Because I don't believe that we can set that date. 
but you would see how that would be extremely compelling, right? Do people agree with me? Yes, Theodore, I agree with you. Okay. But we're not going to do that, right? Because we know some things that Samuel Snow wouldn't have known. We would know what Ellen White says about time setting, right? But we, we still would have this very compelling uh, information. So if we were still in the idea of when is Jesus going to come back and we didn't know some of the things about um, what happened after October 22nd, 1844, we could see, well, you know, this would be, this would be where we look for the end of it. But, you know, it, it doesn't go to, well, it does go to the 10th day of the seventh month through the story of Ezra. So it gives us the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. Um, and there's other ways that we connect to um, the 10th day of the seventh month in 2029. Um, which I can't remember offhand how I did that, but I would you know, find it again. It has to do with um, some of these spans of years and months and so forth. Um, so, so now we have, we have something that to an Adventist would be, and I've seen a lot of these things. So, um, you know, back when I was, um, a new Adventist, I'd been an Adventist for maybe two years. So I was baptized um, in on December 25th, 1982. And then, um, so I was still 19. And um, so it would be, I think about two years, two years later. So it would have been like, yeah, so it would have been in 80. So I was baptized in 82. So it would have been in 84. There were some friends with uh, the 1987 Jubilee. So there were Adventists who were time setting and they were using the Jubilee cycles. So I, I used to have uh, uh, the tabloid of, of that uh, ended up getting destroyed. But uh, I wish I still had it so I could look it over again. Uh, but anyway, they were using these Jubilee cycles and all this kind of stuff. And it it wasn't that compelling. I mean, not to me, um, not anything like what we have now. I mean, it, and I've seen a lot of these types of things. I've seen evangelicals do all these types of calculations. And I can tell you that there is nothing that compares with what we have done. Not even, not even in the slightest. Uh, the accuracy, the detail, the multiple witnesses, the structures, these structures that are, are fractalized, that are wheels within wheels, um, the amount of information that actually confirms what we already understand as Seventh-day Adventists, uh, there is nothing like this. So superficially, somebody looking at it might think it is, but I've studied deeply into these other types of calculations that people have done, the other types of predictions. And I tell you, there's nothing that, that even comes close. So, so we have something that's extremely compelling as far as a date in the future. But we don't know what it means, right? So we're not going to say, well, that's when Christ, you know, you know, we could say, well, that's the year now. We could go... The first day of the first month in 2030, it's going to answer to the first day of the first month in 1844. And so that means October 8th, 2030 is going to be the close of the Day of Atonement, right? That's the 10th day of the seventh month, right? We, we could easily make that argument if we didn't know what we know. And, and there is another person who has April 5th, 2030 as um, uh, the date for the second coming or something like that. Um, a guy named uh, 
down near Wunhai Kim. So he's from Korea. Um, so, so he actually had that April 5th, 2030 date uh, before I did, uh, but he does it wrong, right? So, and he also is predicting all kinds of events that, uh, so he's, he's pretty much on his own. I mean, he has nobody else really interested uh, in what he's doing. Um, and, and the way that he actually did it was the 2300 months uh, from April 19th, 1844. So he counted the 2300 months. He didn't look at the years. He didn't understand that. Lots of things he didn't pick up on. But he did count the 2300 months because he discounted Samuel Snow's message. That is, he didn't believe that Samuel Snow was correct. So he rejects the midnight cry. He believes he's giving it. And in a sense, so, you know, he would be doing what we know we can't do. He would be taking that April 5th, 2030 date and marking that as uh, the close of all things, right? You know, that being the Day of Atonement, ignore, you know, rejecting October 22nd, 1844. So... So what are we going to do with all of this in the story of Samson then? How are we going to take this narrative and fit, fit this to what we have on the board? I know I've done a lot of talking, just rambling, trying to bring this into focus. And at the end of last study, we had these 20 years, which we've addressed before. <clears throat> so that's going to bring us from... 1989 to 2019. So what else do we have? Doesn't matter, you know, don't be scared to, to say something stupid. Something wrong. That's yeah, something wrong. Or something that you think people are gonna think is stupid. Any thoughts? If that was the case, Theodore, I would never say a word. Well, me too. But I do say lots of things that don't really make sense. But let's leave that aside for the moment. What I want people to do is make a comment on this of what they think it means. So we have this whole story with Judah. We have this story with... Um, the jawbone of an ass. We've looked at the symbols. So what are we going to do with this? Would that, that it would be ironic, would it? Uh, this part ain't ironic, is it? No, that's not ironic because there's nothing... Only Samson's morality is ironic. That means it's it's the opposite of what Christ is, right? So we're not going to take any of these symbols and turn them around that way. And plus, you know, we, we've already had this history before the story of Samson. I mean, we had it in the story of Ezra. We had it all kinds of other ways, even uh, dealing with um, Abraham's covenants. So... So we had this history given to us. Well, you have you have him with a jawbone of an ass, which is Islam, right? Yeah. And and that's a symbol of 9-11. So we're saying that 9-11 is tied to this history. Right. Because 9-11 is about the Sunday law. Now, a person could argue then, well, we're just coming towards the Sunday law. But but I don't like putting a date in the future, especially seven years into the future and saying, well, you know, Jesus isn't going to come back until after 2030. Um, I don't believe in a peace and safety messages. Where the jaw, where the jaw of, a, of an ass has slain a thousand men, what would a thousand men What is Islam going to slay, slay a thousand men? Well, no, this, but this isn't, I mean, this is, so Samson represents Christ. Right. Right. 
Um, but Samson also represents um, the chronology of this message. Right? He represents prophecy. Right. Okay. And, and so this is a prophecy regarding Islam. Now, what a thousand men mean, it's hard to say, right? What that means as a symbol. I mean, we could take a thousand and make it into days, right? And we, we do that. You know, 365.25, you know, you're going to get two years. Two years and 269 and a half days. So, you know, it's going to be like 95 days or whatever, less than three years. So, I mean, where that would go or anything. And, and the thing is, we're looking at something that appears to be bringing us into the future. Right. And, and we that's the idea. We've dealt with this 3,000 and the 300. And we know that 365, right? 300 plus 65 is 365. And, and these are complements, you know, 300 is a complement to 65. It completes the year, or 65 is a complement to 300. And we already have the symbol of the year in the first day of the first month, so the first day of the first month. So we have all of this, all of this history. Okay, so those are good comments. Um, we know that it has to do with Islam. You know, so the other temptation would be to say, well, on April 5th, 2030, you know, Nashville's going to be attacked or something. You know, this is where people would tend to want to go. We would want to keep time setting because we're measuring the time. But we understand that that's part of watching and waiting. But nowhere are we given the impression, and actually quite the contrary, that we can know what event is going to happen before it happens. We can measure the time. We can see these structures. But I don't like the idea that I have to wait for seven years um, for you know, basically whatever this is that's being told that has to happen on April 5th, 2030. I need light for my feet and April 5th, 2030 is off in the distance. I mean, it's maybe- We also, we also gotta remember the Bible says he will make the work short. In other words, it'd be you know, not necessarily that it's going to go to that date. It might just happen quicker than that date. Right. So that, and that's one of the things that I've argued is, I mean, one is it's too far in the future for any kind of date for us to be talking about that we might even have the slightest idea of what's going to happen. Right. We just don't know. Um, but even then, you know, the dates that we put even right before us, we don't really know what they mean. You know, so if we're, we're forecasting the weather, so to speak, we might be able to notice the weather, you know, once it happens, you know, if it's raining outside today, we can tell people it's raining outside today. And we can make a guess for tomorrow, like the weathermen, we're going to be wrong most of the time. Uh, but definitely when they give the long term forecast, whether it's a two week forecast or seven day forecast or whether they're going to tell us what the winter is going to be like, you know, uh, in the fall, they're going to say this winter is going to be like that. One thing we know is, I mean, they might as well be flipping coins or reading tea leaves or something um, because man doesn't have any idea what's going to happen in the future. There's so many things that are unexpected. But what is being given to us? And I think that's what we have to focus on. So, so we know we have this date in the future and this date tells us about the events now right? Doesn't it, it tell us a lot about the events that are happening now? It tells us about uh, Colin and Odilio's studies and Colin's prediction. So it gives us information about that, doesn't it? So even if it's a date that nothing happens, it's still significant for us now. 
it is giving light for our feet now. Correct? Correct. Yeah, and I don't think, um, you know, when Colin and Odilio did their studies and God was giving me this information, and then our studies that we began on understanding the lines on December 26, 2021, began these studies. I mean, we started to see this showing up again and again, this April 5th, 2030 day. And, and what it was telling me is that, um, and, and, you know, and I worried that it might be like a peace and safety message in that sense, but I knew that Colin's prediction was not going to work. Um, and I knew, though, that he had light, and they had light because they're using the same symbols as we are, and those are just not things they made up. They already exist, these elections and the mandates. All of these things fit into our structure. But the April 5th, 2030 date confirmed the chronology of Colin, right? And, and then we continue studying the story of Ezra, and we see... Well, this all fits together. But now we're in the period of the divorcement, right? That if it's going to take 2,640 days for that to be completed, I guess then that's the Lord's will. But I don't think that we can take it as anything more than a symbol at this point. Are we agreed on that? Yes, we are. Okay. And I think that's important. That's one of the things we do. Yes. Yeah, because we learned that from Colin's study, even though Colin didn't want to make the prediction of a, an exact date. His structure demanded it, right? Yeah, that's what we see. Yeah, you couldn't put those 65 days to get at the beginning of a prophetic mirror and say, well, no, those just represent um, the 19th Republican president and the 46th um, democratic president right you couldn't do that right you couldn't do that. No yeah, you, uh, you couldn't do it yeah there'd be no precedent for it so you have to come to to this date right you have to come where you where you had three witnesses three witnesses to it to start with right so we had all of these other structures too pointing to these dates so there's a lot more than three three witnesses we had a whole complex structure of calling it prediction but once we once we put it into action so so if we if we did that we, we could see that it confirms two things it confirms that Colin's prediction is part of this structure just as Odilio's is but it also confirms that we can't then, predict a date and and i would look at colin's date as some of those failed predictions that happened after 1844 that were being made and and probably even more specifically i think we could parallel this with uh the november of um 1851 time setting that ellen white refers to in early writing 74 this time setting that was going on. So, so we can't make that mistake. And in chapter 15, we have this uh, five, 15 verse eight, which is going to be the symbol for this line. But I don't know where we place that, right? So that is, if we, if we go to our lines, You know, the one thing that we, we haven't done is we haven't taken the midnight cry and placed it in here, right? So we have the first day of the 10th month, and then we have the first day of the first month. That's, that's what we have. Now, you know, we could try, you know, counting months and figuring, you know, where these other, uh, you know, if this is, uh, you know, we'd count, uh, 
29 months and then 30 months and then 29 months or, you know, for the days. So the days become months, you know, we could do that and try to find some future dates. But I don't think that really helps us at all. Not at this point. So I don't know if I can take what we have and try to lay down when on these lines, these things are going to happen. They're symbols of something that has happened and that's something that will happen. But they're not giving us time. So even though I can take Judges chapter 15, verse 8, and say that this is the verse that is defining this chapter, this latter part of the chapter, I can't... I can't put a date, I can't line that verse up with a date other than a symbol. And that would be the midnight cry symbol. So, so, you know, that's where we have this problem of trying to draw the rest of this on a line is it, it shows us our line. It illustrates it. It's a review it's a repeat and enlarge. It pulls together all these things we already have. But we don't know how we would place that in time. Now, what about the Islam aspect? Because we keep bringing that up, but we don't. Um, is it that our message is going to be now trying to understand the role of Islam? in some way or is it that we just know that the nashville prediction is going to be fulfilled or is there something else about islam repeat that again Theodore. okay so we have Islam as a symbol, but we don't know what it means. I mean, we know that it ties us into 9-11 because 9-11 was done by Islam. It wasn't an inside job, right? 9-11 was uh, Al-Qaeda who first tried to take down the World Trade Center in um, 1993. And then they worked on plans, which are well documented, um, to take down the World Trade Center by flying a plane into it, actually two planes, one into each of the towers. And uh, so this was, this was Islam. And Islam is going to be restrained there, but it's still Islam. It's not just that Islam was restrained. Islam attacks the United States just as they did in 1993. Okay, any more thoughts about that then? Well, as I've long thought, um... If we're looking at Samson in an ironic way and he's slaying these people, why couldn't it mean in, an, in the opposite sense that Christ will actually be bringing former Islamists into a belief in him and a service for him at the end of time? Okay, I, I didn't follow what you're saying. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, I'm just speculating if you want to put it that way that if you're looking at samson literally slaying philistines a thousand of them and they could represent islam because he's using the jawbone right of an ass then yeah. perhaps it means in an ironic sense that in the opposite sense he's uh christ will be winning many muslims to the faith in christ in himself in christ at okay. the end of time okay so that islam is so so christ is bringing islam into uh to the truth people who are islamic 
Muslims. That's what you're saying there. Okay. Yeah, because I've met some some of them that are really sincere. And they're seeking God at the best that they know how, right? And they had a great respect for me when I was telling them about Christ and praying to Christ. I mean, they, they could see that and they could see prayers being answered. And they were very, very uh, keen on learning more. I you know, Maybe I should have stayed with them longer, but. Yeah, I mean, so I, still... I know that. Yeah, go on. I, I know that around the world, like I, I hear or read now and then about this Islamic guy, he's praying and all of a sudden Christ appears to him and tells him that I am the one that you're seeking. And the guy, guy comes to Christ and then he faces all kinds of persecution because he's living in a closed is, is Islamic nation. Now, I've heard more than one story about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I believe God is trying to reach all different kinds of people. Um, oh, of course open. he is. Yeah. Just uh, another thought. Okay. There was a, a speech by George Bush Sr. I think you're aware of. That law has been connected to 9-11. By the New World Order. Yeah. Uh, I think this, is that the one he, he makes this speech and he talks about a thousand points of light. So I'm just thinking, can you tie in that? What he was saying there, a thousand points of light to the one thousand that were slain by the ass. Okay, I, I didn't catch everything you said. It was kind of garbled a bit. Did anybody catch what Stephen said exactly? No, it was real choppy. Okay, so it wasn't just me. Okay. okay I'll, I'll have another go. So um, George Bush Sr., I think it's 9-11, he, he talks about the New World Order. Yeah. He talks about a thousand points of light connected with that New World Order. So a thousand... Points of light. Spots of light? Like something, something like that. Okay. Well, I think maybe points. Now, is that the September? Points. He said points. Points of light. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that the... Um, oops. Is that the September 23rd joint session of the United Nations, the 46th session of the United Nations General Assembly? It was, I don't remember which one it was. He mentioned that. Yeah, so there's there's a, a joint session New World Order speech on 9-11-1990. And then, on, and some people put um, this date, uh, September 11th, 1991. Um, they get these confused, right? But it's actually September 23rd, 1991. And that's when Bush gives a speech to the 46th session of the United States, the United Nations. General Assembly. So, um, but whichever one that is, it's one of those speeches. We, we actually looked at the speeches of George Bush in some of our studies. So, so a thousand points of light. Okay. Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, Okay, so there's a when he, says, when he says a thousand points of light, ain't that having to do something with um, new masonry? Um, why are you talking about Freemasonry? Freemasonry, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say new uh, masonry. Well, no, no, I'm just saying why talk about Freemasonry. I mean, I don't think... Uh, uh, no, I'm mm -hmm. just saying that... that, that I thought the points of um, light that he was talking about, ain't he a Freemason? I I don't know. But I don't know if that has much to do with Freemasonry. I mean, Freemasonry, I mean, is just, I mean, there's all these different organizations that, 
really aren't associated with each other, except that they have maybe a common origin, right? These secular, uh, you know, secret societies, right? But I, I don't think it has anything with, with him being a Freemason. I mean, there's much more powerful institutions than Freemasonry that are controlling this world. But those are, those are things that just, they, I don't think they have a part in our studies as far as we just don't know enough about what's behind it as far as, we know Satan's behind all these things. But whether some particular organization is behind it, I don't know. Um, but it is, we do see all these organizations are part of this, the dragon power, right? That we can state. No disagreement. Right. So, so we have this dragon power. Um, okay. What else? It's, it's, I was just checking there. There's a Wikipedia page called the Facebook Post Flight. Okay. And uh, he, he mentioned it first of all in 1988. And okay. then in his inaugural address on January the 20th, 1989. Okay. So we could maybe more connection to my time in. Maybe you know, Okay, so what was the point of the thousand points of light? Um, it says that I have spoken of thousand points of light of all the community organizations that spread like stars throughout the nation doing good. We will work hand in hand, encouraging, sometimes leading, sometimes being led, rewarding. So, um, I don't think it's really I'm much to think of the new world order in a sense directly. Yeah, okay. So you just got this. Um, okay, so it comes from Arthur C. Clarke's short story Rescue Party. It was originally published in Astounding Science Fiction, May 1946. Okay. And it's talking. Yeah, it was used, used by an um, 1988 Republican National Convention. Okay. A presidential nomination speech. Okay. So that's in. Okay. Well, the question is why does he quote Arthur C. Clarke's science fiction book? And, and this Thousand Points of Light has to do with uh, some kind of screen in the control room. So the screen lights up with a thousand points of light. I mean, at least that's what they're saying that it's it's a reference to. It's also in uh, C.S. Lewis's The Magician's Nephew, published in 1955, dealing with the appearance of stars in the previously dark heaven of Narnia. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I would think, you know, that a thousand points of light would often be a reference to stars. So when, when he says this, uh, January 20th, 1989, as I'll read it so people can hear it clearly. I've spoken of a thousand points of light of all the community organizations that are spread like stars through the nation doing good. We will work hand in hand, encouraging, sometimes leading, sometimes being led, rewarding. We will work on this in the White House in the cabinet agencies. I will go to the people in the programs that are the brighter points of light. And I will ask every member of my government to become involved. The old ideas are new again, because they are not old, they are timeless. Duty, sacrifice, commitment, and a patriotism that finds its expression in taking part and pitching in. Um, 
So it says here in the Wikipedia page, Bush did not attribute the phrase to either Burroughs or Lewis. It's been speculated Bush avoided all mentions of W.S. Burroughs in his first two major speeches because he did not wish to associate his candidacy or incipient presidency with Burroughs' controversial works and personal escapades. So, um, Trump mocked the phrase at a rally in Montana on July 5th, 2018. Um, yeah, so it's just one of those phrases that shows up. So we're saying that, that somehow it's connected with the New World Order speech. Well, uh, that was my thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Just a thousand is a pretty common number to use. I mean, whether we could connect that or not, I don't know. Um, so, <clears throat> so, so we have also the three thousand of of Judah, and we don't particularly know uh, what that is. I mean, we know that we can connect it. It's eight years and 78 days. Um, or is it 87 days? Yeah, 87 days. No, 78. So yeah, did that. Okay, 78 days. So eight years and 78 days is 3,000 days. We don't particularly know what that means. We don't know where to put that, if we're going to put it as time. We did count back from April 5th, 2030, and it gave us January 17th. Um, 2022 and then we counted a thousand days back from that and it gave us the 17th day of the first month in 2018 i think 2017 i can't remember but anyway so so we've looked at this 3000 and this 1000 it hasn't really given us anything particular So again, so there's some ideas there. Now, again, the things we know is this movement is moving towards the upper room, right? that, that God needs us to be reconciled to him and to one another. And um, that this divorcement is not about people being divorced, but it's divorcing from a false system of study. And we do we don't know what's going to happen between now and april 5th 2030 we just know we have that symbol there so what else do we have Did you read what I put in chat in chat about the March sixth and the April fifth and uh, Ellen White? Uh, I I know she mentioned Daniel eleven thirty six and onward being fulfilled, and I think she said till the end of the chapter, which would be verse forty five. Okay. I was wondering if there is a connection. Okay, so Daniel eleven verse thirty six to forty five. Okay. Well, you know that could be you know, as symbols in that line. Um, so that, that final month, so to speak, of that 354 day year has this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so at least those dates can stand as symbols. Sixth day of the third month and the fifth day of the fourth month can stand as symbols that tie us to that.
Yeah, it's just difficult from, you know, for me, from the perspective of what we've, what, what we've gone through. Um, the light that's for our feet right now is, is telling us our present duty and our present duty is to be reconciled with one another. And, and we're reminded in this story of all of the, you know, this story just brings together so many things that we've studied. So many of these symbols that we have from Millerite history. And, and this thirst, I mean, when, when, when would we mark this thirst? Wouldn't we mark this at 9-11? Wouldn't we mark him being revived at 9-11? Because he's going to drink at 9-11? And then it says he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. It's going to give us that. And that's going to bring us from 9-11 or two nine eleven, right? And that was why I asked that that question about the forty years, right? Because this is a forty year oppression of the Philistines. So we have basically the first twenty years. That's going to bring us, and you're saying it's eighteen years and seven months, right, Stephen? from the birth of Samson to you. Well, I don't really know for sure, but I'm just thinking that would be nice if it was, but there's no way of proving it, you know, because you have there the one eight seven and then twenty years. Yeah. But, uh, I know I know it would be he'd be born or he would be a judge around that time. But uh, I can't really it's just a sort of uh, it'd be nice if it could prove it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so so, so Samson's going to judge the 20 years are the end of that 40 years. It's the latter half. Okay. What what else can we do with this story? What what are we missing? What do we need to consider? What if what we're looking at here lines up with the Millerite history to 1843 and 1844 and taking it out to 2030 lines up with the part of the history that takes us to 1850 for the establishment of the second table of the 1850 chart. Um, okay, you need to explain more why you would do that. Right now I'm looking at at a situation I'm trying to figure out how to be able to explain it but we have several way marks that I believe we're going to be able to place that are going to establish this and establish what I'm saying very firmly A lot of this, 
I had been dealing with in trying to write out how we can more, more clearly explain our understanding of the 2300 Arab Boker prophecy of Daniel 8 and how we how we can also tie very firmly the time for his people that we find in Daniel 9 this portion taking us out to 2030 so many would look at this as being additional time setting but I'm having to ask if this is not more of a recognition of the repeat of Millerite history. Well, yeah, and, and, and because it ties it to 9-11. Correct. Right. So symbolically, doesn't literally have to be a date that mark some event but i guess to get to that i mean maybe the the thing that we that's being told us is to get to that we have to heed the light that's in front of us now which has to do with reconciliation well I think we're going to have to recognize that we're also going to have to recognize that there may be some other symbols that we haven't yet placed in this portion of the story. I, I am very fully in agreement with what Stephen is looking at hypothetically about Samson possibly being 18 years and seven months at the time of his seeking to be enter into covenant with the Philistine woman. Because I think that that, that helps us consider more carefully the importance of July 18th. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so one of the things um, that I've always had problems with in, in being in this movement is uh, the attitudes about others, whether it's people in the church or whether people who have left the movement or whether people in the movement we don't like, all these types of things. And, you know, if we're going to, because lots of the things that we have read, when Ellen White talks about fellowship with the world uh, she's not often talking about these external organizations that we often try to look at but she talks about how we act and behave where our value system lies how we treat one another right okay you've seen that in the, the presentations you've done right and and in Jones studies right that to be separate from the world means to be separate from its spirit. And its spirit is the spirit of Antichrist. It's, it's the spirit of Satan, the accus accuser of the brethren. Yet God is still, you know, blessed this movement in spite of the fact of, of this fault. But I, I see it as an alliance with the world. That is, we, we have the same values as the world, we compare things the same as the world does. And um, so a person could feel they, they're not allied with the world, but they really are, right? Right. Um, because they don't they don't understand that it's not it's not these formal alliances, it's something else. So so when I, when I look at all this this history, I look at all of what what's happened in Adventism, how Adventism got to the point where it is now. I mean, God is trying to still save Seventh Day Adventists. They're not like 
all evil people or anything like that. They're just like us. And, and, and we're in that same boat, really, in the sense that there's lots of things we believe that there isn't a reason for us to believe them. They're just knowledge that's passed on. And how we study isn't really that much different. So, so something, something has to change. I mean, there, there has to be something that happens in this movement. And I just don't know what it is, how it's going to come about. And maybe that's just, this is a time of prayer, uh, a time of self-reflection. We'll continue studying what God gives us. But I don't see how we can take any of these symbols and say, this is going to happen here in the future. This is attached with some other date. So this latter part of chapter 15, I just think speaks more about the connections with the past. Okay, so 1 Samuel 18, verse 7, or is that 10, verse 7? 18, verse 7, right? Right, was that what it was for Samuel 8? Yeah. Okay. Again, so it's one. might sound way right. out there, but. <laughs> well, yeah, the woman answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, David his ten thousands. And we've looked at that verse before. Uh, so uh, the July 18th verse in 1 Samuel. Yeah. And um, so this diminution of Saul compared to David. Um, yeah, what what got me on that was the thousand. What does the thousand mean? I looked in the concordance and there's lots of verses about thousands, multiple thousands and what have you. And I thought, well, what about that? First Samuel 18, 7? Because I remember I'd written about this passage before. And and then then when when I didn't I couldn't make out everything Stephen was saying, but mm -hmm. uh he was Samson was supposedly 18 years and seven months, and so well, there's an 18 and a seven yeah. also. So well, maybe there is a connection there. Yeah. So anyway, we're get we're done for this week until Sunday. And we'll look at these things again. We'll have more time to think about it. Uh we do have studies in between there. So um, well, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the study and for all the light that we, you have given us. Help us to be faithful to what you have given, um, and not to speculate, but just to trust that you are leading and that you can correct us. We pray for each person. May your angels watch over them. May your Holy Spirit speak to their hearts. And may you use us to your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.